So, any questions about anything so far? Going once, going twice. All right. So, what I'm going to tell you about today is we're on week six, huh? Week six, the midterm stuff. So, what we're going to talk about on Friday is files, input, and output. Uh, the only other thing that I want to remind you of is the split string business, which is I posted it under Wednesday. It wasn't, it wasn't there. I mean, I hadn't put it visibly there for a while. Uh, but it's very important with the kind of things we're going to be doing. Okay, so you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to split strings. You, from from now on, we're going to be reading files. Everything in a file is going to be read as a string. So you're going to have to go and split the file by lines, and then you're going to have to split the line by spaces or commas, and then so on and so on and so on, right? But Python makes splitting things pretty easy, so I'll, I'll go over this today again. Not, not that I have went over it before. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, and I'm just going to put it right in there. Okay, so here it is. I have a string sentence, and it's a beautiful day, and Notice there is a single space here, but there's multiple spaces there, right? So if I say words, sentence split, and then I just do print words. Let me show you words equals words. <clears throat> You're going to see that it actually turns it into a list, right? So it goes there and it splits. When you say split, what split does is split splits a string by any number of spaces, right? So by any number of spaces, I mean there's one space here, there's like five of them in there. It doesn't care. Anytime it encounters a space or groups of spaces, it turns the thing into a list, right? So this is the first element of my list, second element of my list, third element of my list. Okay? Make sense? Any questions? Okay, so next one is, let's say I have some other string, right? So I have this thing here. Okay, so I have a string social security number, right? It's something like this. It's separated by dashes, right? And all I have to do is I'm just going to say SSN split, and then inside the quotes, I want to tell it by what I want it to split. So I want it to split by dashes, and then if I run this thing, let me label it. All right? Then you're going to see that it turns this thing now into a list again. All right? So you can tell it by what to split. Okay? Just be careful when you're splitting. Don't do something like this, right? If I did it if I did it like that, then it will look for a single space only. Okay? So Normally, there's never really a call for you to be splitting like this unless you know exactly what the sentence is going to be, I guess. So just split by any number of spaces like that. Okay, don't put quotes in there with a space in between. Okay, and there's another example I have in there, which is basically the same thing, but now we have dashes. All right, if I get this thing, paste it in there, run it in there. All right, you're going to see that it now it splits it by dashes. Okay, so it's a pretty easy way to break a big string into little substrings, put them in a list. Okay? All right. So this is the kind of stuff you're going to be doing for your files. All right. So this is uh, just splitting strings. Splitting strings will be used uh, when reading files. Okay? So, and you have some fun assignments later on. There's one where you're supposed to do a brute force cracking a password, all right? So let me go back to, and I've put those on the last week, I think, week eight. Uh, no, that's not it. Previous week, maybe. No, yeah, brute force password cracking. So it's basically you have a bunch of information about someone, you're trying to hack their computer, so you're gonna have to go in there and split all the information into the little piece into little pieces. You're going to put those, all those pieces in one big list, and then you're going to have Python permutate possible arrangements of, of the, the little pieces, right? And then 
you're going to hash it and all those other things, but I'll tell you about that later. But the bottom line is it comes into play in a lot of these assignments. Okay, reading a web page, scraping for emails, a lot of these assignments will require you to split, especially your final project, right? The final data management project, you're going to have to read a big file, split it into lines. Each line is a bunch of things separated by commas. You have to sp split every, every line by commas. Then the first thing is going to be a date. The, tate, the date is like something with either dashes or forward slashes. It kind of changes de de depending on what computer you're using. You're going to have to split the date by, by forward slashes. So there's a whole bunch of splitting, and it's very easily done, you know, just using this. That's all there is. Anyway, so now let's talk about files, right? Files, input, and output. Okay, so this thing is in my desktop, right? And that is where my file is going to be saved unless I specify a specific path for my file. So let me go back to the week six, right? And look at the file input and output, right? You're going to see in there, uh, I'm going to start with this one on top, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to be creating a file called sumfile.txt. That file does not exist, right? I can go to my desktop. All right, and you're going to see that, well, even if I arrange this thing by date or whatever, there's no, there's no file, uh, some file txt, right? It just doesn't exist. It's not in there. All right? So the bottom line is if the file does not exist, we're going to create it. So that's okay. You can create it. You can create that file. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to say, all right, uh, my file dot write, I think it's dot write, that's yes, that right. Okay, right, and I'm going to put hello world, right? We got to start with that as usual. Run that thing. Actually, let's just run it like this to see what happens. Okay, and if you notice right here, it created the file, some file txt, and there's nothing in the file actually. Okay, why is that? Because I created the file, I wrote something in it, but I never saved the file. How am I going to save the file? My file dot close. Right? Closing saves the file. Okay, if you don't save your file, there's not there's not going to be anything in the file. So if I run this thing now again, go back, look at this thing, and there's your hello world again. Or now now you see a hello world. Okay? So far so good. Pretty basic. Alright. So now, before I close the file, why don't I do this? I'm going to say, all right, hello, space, and I'm going to do my file, right, and then there, right? Let's have a look at this. And I'm going to go look at the file again. Same thing, right? So putting these things on two separate lines does not insert a new line. Right? It's not like the print. Whenever you did a print, it automatically inserts a new line. That's not how write works. If you want to insert a new line, backslash n. Right? Run this thing. Go look at the file. And there it is. Now it's on two, two separate lines. Make sense? So nothing different. Well, t tiny little differences compared to, you know, writing, I mean, doing a print. Okay? The way the write works is similar to how the input works, right? So I can go in there and try to do this kind of stuff. So let's say I'm going to do a new line here. And I'm going to put, I want to do something like this, like 3 plus 3 is equal to, and then in here I'm going to do 3 plus 3, just like that. All right, let's see if that works. I want to try it. Nope. And what is it telling me? It's telling me write takes exactly one argument to give it. Does that sound familiar? Which, which, what else gave you that error message? More than one string is enough. Input, right? Whenever you do an input and you do something like this, it will give you that exact kind of an error message to tell you. Input takes exactly one argument to give it. So what do we do to fix it? Okay, good. So I'll do plus, right, str, 
And now let's try it again. F5. No error. Go look at the file. Now we should open it again. There it is. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Okay? Uh, if I try to do, well, you already know that, yeah, you have to do str. So, writing to a file, let's do another one. Let me do, uh, let me show you another one that's not going to work. So, this, and I'm going to put a new line at the end, plus, quote, quote, backslash in, right? And here I'm just going to say 10, just like that. Okay? Just so you can see that error also. Okay? And the error now is must be str not int you know what that means right how do i fix it, it tells you how to fix it what's that how do i turn it into a string str right so let's say it's some variable right you have num is equal to 100 right plus Good code. Let's do a new line. All right, num is equal to 100. If I wanted to write this thing, right, I can't, I can't do it any other way other than just doing this. Okay. Run this again. And have a look at it. And there it is. There's your 100 in there also. Okay. So the moral of the story is you can only write strings to a file. Okay, that's that's what we're doing here. Okay, and then they can only be all right. There, the right takes only one argument. All right, so you can't use the comma business. Okay, you can do the percent thing. Okay, so instead of doing this, I can also go and rewrite this thing with the percent business. Right, so three plus three is equal to percent i right that's going to be an integer and then i'm going to do percent in front of this thing and hopefully that's also going to give you let's do 30 plus 30 so it looks different 30 plus 30 run that thing and let's look at the file close it open it again and there you go 30 plus 30 60 okay so you can use the percent business, that's fine. You can use the string concatenation. Just keep in mind, you have, it has to be one argument, right? So whatever we're putting into the parentheses, it's one thing, not multiples. All right, so this is your file, I guess, output. Uh, and of course, we can use loops to write to a file, right? So let's go and do this thing where I had uh, four i in range from zero to let's say 100 steps of one. I'm gonna do my file right. And then my file, by the way, is just a name, variable name, arbitrary that, you know, I chose. My file right, I'm gonna write uh, I, right? And it has to be a string. And then I'm gonna do the business where I count things. So I'm gonna say if I modulus, I don't know, eight is equal to zero, I'm gonna insert a new line. So my file write one, oops, write a new line, okay? So basically insert a new line every eight, All right? So if I run this thing, and we go look at the file, and it looks like that, right? Eight per line. Okay, and it's actually a lot easier for you to, you know, it's a lot faster to, for it to spit out the output inside of a file than it is to show this stuff to you in, in, the, in the terminal or the shell, whatever it is, right? Uh, so if you're working with a huge amount of data, it might be good for you to just put it in a file and look at the file instead, and, instead of trying to show a thousand lines or whatever you're trying to do, okay? So that's the basic output of the file, right? So in, let's say one more thing. So this is the file, right? Let's say, suppose this file exists and I went in there and I just said, CS is awesome, right? And I saved this thing, so that's 
that's the contents of my file now. All right, CS is awesome. What's going to happen if I run the program? Clear it. Clear it. Yeah, we'll wipe out everything that was in the file. Let's go look at the file, and there you go. Now it changes the contents. Okay, so if the file exists, you're going to wipe out whatever's in the file. If the file does not exist, you're going to create the new file. Okay, the changes of that file, the, the changes that you made to that file will not be seen unless you close the file. Right, it's the same thing as if you open a Word document and you wrote your paper and you hit the close button without ever saving the thing. Right, it's not going to be a Word document. And that's what happens if you don't, you know, well, there's going to be a Word document, but there's not going to be anything in it. Okay. So, got to close the file if you want to save the changes. All right, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is, in fact, why don't I write this thing with a little commas in between? Uh, plus, uh, I'll put spaces. Okay. So, now this thing's got some spaces in there. All right, so the, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go read that file now. Okay, so it's pretty much very, very similar format to how you write to a file. So this is file input. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just this thing, because I don't want to write it again, and then paste it. And this time I'm going to change this thing to R. So instead of W, R. Okay, so I'm reading the file. So this is open the file, open some file txt for writing. Okay, if the file exists, you will erase the contents, right? If the file does not exist, you will create it. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now this one here, I'm actually going to start it wrong to begin with. So let's say I'm trying to open some file that doesn't exist, right? So I'm going there, I'm adding the number one towards the end of the file name, because there isn't such a file name. And let's have a look at what it does. Oops. No such file or directory, some file one txt, right? So if the file does not exist, the file has to exist if you want to open it. OK? Make sense? All right. So I'm going to go back, change the name, right? Open some file, blah, 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 and it has to be the same business. I'm just going to call this my file again. My file is equal to open, right? I'm opening this thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to read first the whole file. So uh, file as string is equal to my file read, just like that. OK? And I'm going to go and just do print file as string, all right, oops, wrong place, all right, so it's going to read the whole file as a string, it's going to put it in this, uh, in this variable, and then I'm going to show you the variable, and you're going to see in the shell window that there it is, right, the whole thing is one big string, okay? That's one way to read a file, and you're not really, well, it's okay for you to read a file like that, but most of the times there's going to be more than one line in the file, so you would want to split it by lines, okay? So then you can only do it one way or another, right? So you can't read it as a string and then go and read it again as, you know, something else, okay? So that's why I'm commenting this out. And now I'm going to change this to file as list of lines, okay? And I'm going to go in there and do split lines. I think it's split lines. And I'm going to show you what that is. All right. Run it, and there you go. So what is it doing? It goes in there, all right? This is the file. And the first line is the hello, so that's this. The second line is the world, that's this. Third line is three plus three is equal to six, that's this, right? So every line becomes an element of this list. Make sense? Any questions? Pretty basic. 
All right. So now let's say I want to go and I'm going to split. Um, by the way, I can figure out how many how many numbers how many lines there are, right? All right. Print. There are len. Right. Lines. All right. And let's have a look at it. All right, there are 20 lines. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? I'm going to start at line 7, right? I'm going to split this thing by spaces, okay? So I'm going to tell it, uh, go to, let's do this. Split uh, line 7 by spaces. And when you and this is basically something that you should be doing for when you do the data mining when you're reading a data from a file show yourself what you're working with because I think it should be line 7 but I don't know and it's very easy for me to just show myself what's line 7 so print uh, file list of lines 6 right so 6 is supposed to be the 7th line is equal to and then I'm going to copy this there, run it. Uh, files list of strings six. So I got the wrong one. Okay, six. I got to go one more. Let's go to the seven. So this is, I guess, line eight. All right, seven. Because I don't want to look at the zero. Check again. All right, there you go. So I got one of this one of these lines that have a bunch of numbers with separated by spaces, which is what I did deliberately when I started doing this. So now what I'm going to do is uh, split line eight by spaces. So this is show line eight, right? Show line eight. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say something like line uh, items or something like that is equal to this line. right and split that line because that line is just this right here which is a string if you look at if you look at your file as list of lines business or what it shows here everything is shown in quotes right so this is one big string this is one big string this is one big string even if I wrote single numbers inside of the file they'll still all be just strings okay there's just one number per line it'll, it will still be a string right like this stuff here single number inside quotes you can't do math with it right so when you're reading from a file you have to convert this always to a number okay and I'll show you so I'm gonna do this line item so I'm gonna split this line split line 8 so I'm gonna split this by 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 spaces and I'm gonna put all these different numbers inside of a list right so let's call it a uh, list of line items right and I'm going to show you that thing. And this is exactly what you should be doing for, you know, the data mining projects that are coming your way. Okay? So this here, you just break every little thing into the smallest pieces possible and then look at it. Don't, don't ever just assume, oh, I, I think it's this. Just show it to yourself like I am. All right? So there you go. I grabbed this string here, which is what I read from one of the lines in the file. I split it. And let's say what I want to do now is I want to find, I don't know, want to find the average from the, the numbers in that line. So what I do, for i in range, just the usual, starts at zero, goes to the length of this, right? Steps of one, right? How do I do a sum? Well, make a variable sum is equal to zero, then go in there and say sum plus equals this i, right? And let's have a look at what it does, and I'll show you the sum. Print sum equals sum, okay? Now this would work with numbers, but remember I told you, when you see these things in quotes, they're all strings, so this is what happens when you try to do this. Unsupported operand types, type for plus equal, you're trying to add an integer and a string. Can't do that. All right, so how do I fix it? Okay, I can turn them into floats. 
All right, let's see if it likes it. F5. Yep. Okay, that's it. So you have to, whenever you're reading a number from a file, you have to convert it to a float or an integer, whatever it is, before you can do the sum business or before you can do any kind of arithmetic. Okay? All right. Uh, how would I do it for the rest of these lines? Let's say I want to do the, a let's do, I want to do average. All right? Print average is equal to sum divided by uh, the length of list list of line items. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. And here's the average now. Okay. Uh, let's, let's say I want to do it for all the lines. I don't want to do it just for this line. I want to do it for all the other lines too. Okay. That's why I wanted to do like figure out how to do it for one line. Right. This is one line only, right? So this is that's the one line, and it goes all the way down to here. Okay? So now I want to do it for a bunch of lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this thing here. This is the one, right? So do this for lines. I don't know how many lines I got. 20 lines. So for lines 8 through 20, do, the, do this for lines 8 through 20, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this here, right? So that's starting at line 8. Instead of 7, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, for, let's go with J in range from 8 to 21, because I wanted to go to 20. Uh, and, in fact, I can just go, uh, where's this thing? this. Alright, let's say I don't know how many lines I have, right? File is list of lines, go to the end of it, steps of one, uh, and then I grab this thing here, tab it, change the seven to J, now this thing is going to work for every line, and then the rest of it is going to be pretty much, you know, the same. I can just crap this, copy it, Paste it in there. Make sure I fix my indentation. All right. All right. And that's it. Print. Any questions? Let's try it. All right. So these, these are your lines, and these are all the averages for the different lines. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that you're going to be doing for your data mining projects. The process is you do it for one line, you split the line as, into the little pieces, as, as the smallest pieces possible, and then just gradually start, you know, building on top of that. Okay, you're not going to be able to solve the data mining project all at once. There's 1,200 lines or something in it. Right. If as soon as you start looking at those 1,200 lines, you just you're you're gonna hit a wall. It's just too much information. It's gonna get it's it's gonna overwhelm you. So what you gotta do is and let me show you. So basically, at this point now, you pretty much know everything that I wanted to teach you in this class. All right. These are all the basics: files, input, output, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, so what do you have to do? Uh, the assignments for files. Week six, all right? So you have one that is, uh, talks about sunspots, all right? So the sunspots, you have the file given here, right? Download the file, right? Make sure you download it and don't just copy paste this thing because it might introduce some extra formatting, right? So download the text file. What is the text file? I don't even remember. Oh, it's some uh, sunspots readings, right? For the different years from year 1945 to 2008. I don't know how many years that is, right? Uh, what you have to do is you have to go and you have to average the numbers in each line. So you go in there, read each line the way I showed you, split it into pieces, put all the pieces together, sum them up, figure out the average. Okay, the only trick here is that you have an extra little thing in the beginning, which is the year, so you have to exclude that from the average. Right? Basic stuff, if you understood what I just told you. Okay? 
And then there's going to be a bunch of averages. You're going to write them to a file. The, average, the, the averages themselves will be written to a file uh, called averages.txt, right? You got to submit both of these files, right? And I'm showing you what the first, the average for the first year is supposed to be, right? You can go, it's a good practice for you to go in there and write this, you know, put, put, this, put these numbers in like an Excel file or something and verify the actual numbers, okay? Because you will have to do that for the next one. So the next one, let's go to the files, input and output, and median. Okay. Uh, so this one here is write a program which writes a random number between 50 to 55 of numbers. Each of these numbers is between 0 and 100 in a file. So it's going to be 50 to 55 numbers. Each of these numbers is going to be between 0 to 100. You don't know how many numbers, and you don't know the value of the numbers. Okay, what your program is supposed to do, right? What your program is going to do is it's going to calculate the median. All right, so let's see. So first you're going to write all these files to a file, write numbers to a file, then open the file, read the numbers from them into a list. You know how to do that, right? You can write them on a separate line, each number. You can put them all on the same line, separated by spaces. Either way works, okay? Then you have to sort this thing and show the list, right? You can't use Python building functions such as sort, sort at sum, none of these, right? Just the usual. Don't get to use any of them. You gotta write them all yourself, okay? So it's gonna be a, a random list of numbers in random order. The first thing you need to do is you need to sort the list, right? And then you can calculate the median, okay? What's the median? The, month, the number in the middle, right? So it's not the average. A lot of people are mistaking that. It's not median. Is not average. It's all it is is you, you, you order the things and you pick the one in the middle. Okay. If the things are odd, you're going to pick the one in the middle, right? So for example, if I have you know five or how many numbers do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. Then if you pick the middle one, you have three on the left, you have three on the, left, on the right, right? So it's easy to pick the middle when there's odd, okay? And it's equally easy to pick the middle when it's even, but what you have to do is you have to average them, right? So you order the thing, and if it's even number of things, you're going to pick the two in the middle, you're going to take their average, and that is the median, okay? Any questions? I think uh, that's uh, enough clues on how to do this. Uh, and I'll just tell you, just give you a little sneak peek on what's coming next week. I know some of you are already starting to work on this. Where's the data mining, right? So this is the final project, right? The final project is this. The rest of them, right, all the extra credit stuff, uh, it's extra credit, so it's not going to count against you if you don't do it. But in my opinion, these are some of the more, more fun assignments, right? Doing the GUI calculator, you know, brute force cracking, you know, password, reading a web page. Later on in the next week, I do a, what is it, Caesar cipher, protein weight, some like real world applications of the, the kind of things you can do with, with Python, okay? Uh, so let's have a look at the data mining project. All right, so the data mining project, is giving you this table CSV. I'm just going to download it. All right. And this is what it looks like. All right. So there's 1,000, oops, something lines. Come on. It's always faster to go down than up. What happened? Oh, there we go. So it's 1,031 lines, right? The first thing on each of these lines is the date, right? And then there's a bunch of other data after that. Uh, I think this is Google stock prices or something. I don't, know, I don't even know what it is. Who cares, right? The most important thing is you have 1,031 lines and you're not concerned about this stuff here. Okay, you're only interested in this. Okay, so what you have to do is, oh, and by the way, this is a CSV file. So let's have a look at it. It's in the downloads probably. All right, so if I open this thing with, say, uh, where's my sublime? 
All right, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to drag and drop this thing in Sublime. Okay, that's what it looks like. So this is a table CSV, and all table CSV is, it's a comma-separated file, right? So you have a bunch of information. Each field is separated by the other field by a comma, right? And then you have a bunch of lines, right? So what you have to do is you have to read this whole thing, split it by lines. You're going to grab each line, split it by commas. Then you have to go after the first piece right here, and you're going to split that thing by dashes or whatever it is, right? On some computers, it is weird, right? Sometimes the, the year is going to go last. Sometimes the month is going to be in the middle. Sometimes the month is going to be first. Sometimes these dashes are going to turn into forward slashes. It, it's kind of weird, all right? I don't even know why it's changing on different computers or different operating systems. It should be consistent, but it isn't, okay? But it's awesome that it does that because you're forced to look at the data, right? Don't assume that your data is going to look like this, even though you're getting the same exact CSV file, right? The numbers are going to get scrambled in order, uh, in different order. Okay, you're only, you're only interested in the last field and the first field. All these other ones you can ignore, right, after, after you split the lines. And uh, the way, what you're going to be doing is, so let's say this first month ends, uh, let's say right here, right? So this is my first month, month set, month nine. All right, goes from here to here. What you're going to do is you're going to have to have like a sum variable. The sum variable is going to do this kind of a stuff. So the first day is equal to this. Next day is equal to the previous plus the current. Right, and it just keeps doing that until it gets to the yellow one. When it gets to the yellow one, what it has to do is it's not going to keep adding them up because now it's a new month. When it gets to the yellow one and it restarts, to the data that is for that day, and then it resumes that same thing. Okay? All right. Um, another thing that you're going to need to do is count how many days there are. Right? Count will be like one, two, three. Right? And that's why it's a good idea to do this in Excel. Right? So you can see what happens. So it's going to try to do this same thing that, I, that I'm doing. It's going to go and try to, okay, when we get to eight, month eight, it's going to try to increase itself again. You want to restart at 1 as soon as you get to the next month, okay? The way I recommend you do this is you have some kind of a variable like old month and current month, right? The old month, we're going to start that thing equal to, if I can click it, equal to 9, right? The old month is just equal to whatever this, this, this thing is in the beginning. The current month is going to be equal to 999, nine, nine. whatever this, whatever the actual field for this is, that's what my current month is, okay? As soon as, as soon as I get to this, my current month is going to change to 8, okay? So the way you're going to detect to do this reset of the sum and the count is by looking when the values of your old month and the current month are different, okay? So... Old month is basically nine. Nine, whoops. All right, I'm just going to copy that whole thing, see if it works. No, hold on. All right. As soon as, as, soon as these two are different, that is your trigger that these, the sum and the count need to be reset. And as soon as, as, soon as that happens, that is when you're going to also reset this one to eight. Right, so as soon as there, as soon as this becomes different from this, reset your count, reset your sum, and then reset the old month to now be equal to this current month. And that way you can resume doing this for the next the next month, and then when it gets to the end of this month, that's what you're gonna do there. Okay? The process is remember how I told you, first you're gonna grab one of these lines, you're gonna split it, you're gonna look at the data, you're gonna look at the date, you're gonna extract all the different pieces out of it. You're going to get the month out, you're going to get the year out, you're going to get the actual data. Those are the three things you need. Okay? We don't care about the actual value for the day of that month. We only care about the month and the year and that last field, the AG, AD, DG close. Right? So what we're going to do is you're going to look at the first month, 
right? Just the first month. So what you're going to do is you're going to set up a loop that goes just for the first month. Okay? You're going to make sure this works. You should get this number that I'm having here and this number that I'm having here. You do this same thing that I'm doing with your Excel table, right? Do not change the original file, right? So get, get the table CSV that you're going to be using in Excel. Save it somewhere away from the project. Like, say, if, if your program is working on the desktop, save this thing in the documents or something. That way, these changes that I'm doing here are not going to affect your file that your program is reading. Okay, so you need to work with Excel so that you can see what the actual values are so you can verify the, you know, the numbers. Okay, if, if you're not getting the right sum, that means you're doing something wrong with the sum. If you're not counting right, you're going to see that, hey, wait, my count's not right. Okay, so you, bottom line is you're going to do this for the first month only. Okay, you want to make sure that you get this number and this number. Then you're going to push your loop to go one further, just over to the next month, just one day over. And then what you're going to notice, it, it will try to do this. Like, it will get you these kind of a number, like 14, or this number for the sum, and this number for count, or 15 for count. Then you have to think about, all right, hold on. How am I going to now reset these things? And I told you how to do that. That is going to be done using the old month and the current month variables. Okay? Any questions? It's a long, complicated project, okay? And it, you have to do it, 60 points. If you don't do it, it counts against you. Okay, there's no final exam. This is your final project. That's basically for the final exam, okay? Questions? Let me know if you have them, when you have them. And I'm going to upload uh, today's lectures lecture notes and the video in a minute, okay?